It has been just over two years since I last created a piece of content focused on Thorn Health Tech, so it's probably long overdue for an update, especially considering something big just happened. Back in August of 2021, you might remember that I did a deep analysis on the IPO paperwork that Thorn Health Tech filed with the SEC. About 45 days later, Thorne started to trade on the NASDAQ, but unlike some of the other like publicly traded functional CPG brands, I decided not to do like these quarterly breakdown updates. So I essentially went dark, or at least I did on YouTube. Because my avid LinkedIn followers know I've talked about the company a handful of times in various posts. But from what I can remember, the only other mention of Thorne Health Tech on my YouTube content was in this year's annual like outlandish supplement industry event prediction content. And what I said in that January content piece is actually a great primer to that big news I was referring to in my introductory statement. Nestle Health Science is already the largest supplement portfolio company in the world, but maybe a name like Thorne Health Tech makes sense. The company has lost about half of its value since IPOing in late 2021. So if you read the headlines, you know that I was mostly correct in my prediction. I was correct that Thorn Health Tech was undervalued by the public markets. I was correct that Thorn Health Tech would be acquired in 2023, but I was wrong about the buyer. After a few years of heightened M&A activity, Nestle has been quiet thus far this year. On the other hand, global consumer-focused investment firm El Catterton has been quite busy. On August 28th of 2023, Thorn Health Tech announced that it entered into a definitive agreement under which El Catterton would acquire all outstanding shares of common stock of Thorn for 1020 per share in cash. The transaction value is approximately $680 million, which represents a 94% premium to the unaffected closing share price. Now, Shareholders will still need to approve, but Thorne's independent special committee and board of directors have each unanimously approved the agreement. There's kind of the press release details, but you guys know just sticking to that basic information is not my style. For this content, I want to get into the following items. Why is the private equity firm acquiring Thorne along with an update on the last like two years of operational performance, and then what could the future look like together? Many supplement industry professionals will tell you that the reason El Catterton is acquiring Thorne surrounds part of the founding impetus, which was a belief that supplement manufacturers didn't take the necessary steps to make sure their products were as pure and high quality as possible. Thorne developed a reputation as the industry leader in setting the standards for making nutritional supplements, and those products define the highest level of quality and innovation. So while other supplement brands were investing in promoting their products, like I always say, most supplement brands are just marketing companies that just so happen to sell supplements, Thorne was investing in sourcing exemplary ingredients, perfecting its manufacturing methods, and participating in clinical research. To this day, approximately 90% of Thorne supplement sales are generated by products that they manufacture in-house. And though I believe all that manufacturing and product quality stuff had to be present for El Catterton to be interested, there are dozens of those business models across the supplement industry. El Catterton is acquiring Thorne because of something deeper than that. Thorne Health Tech, or should I say the company formerly known as Thorne Research, is definitely not just that 1984 supplement company which was responsible for bringing ginkgo biloba to the U.S. market. But the foundational why behind Thorne is central to El Catterton being attracted to and willing to pay a premium for the company. And it's also aligned with my personal why. I've probably told this story in different bits and pieces over the years within my content, but I had a small but powerful event happen to me that triggered all this kind of niche educational content that's been stacked up on top of my consulting company. So while I've never met Al Zapp and he founded the company before I was even born, we both started from a mission-based pursuit to earn nutritional supplements the respect they deserve. I've been trying to get more respect for the supplement industry from like the food and beverage side of the CPG industry, 
and Thorne wants the respect from the pharmaceutical side. So what does this all have to do with L. Catterton acquiring Thorne? Everything. That 1984 motivation is still weaved into all Thorne decisions almost four decades later. Thorne noticed early the shift from individuals viewing themselves as patients to viewing themselves as consumers in the healthcare market, with healthcare evolving from a reactive one-size-fits-all approach to a distinctively proactive, personalized, and integrative approach, there was still a massive opportunity available. So in February of 2021, Thorne merged with Longevity, a proprietary AI-driven platform that redefines consumer health through a model of test, teach, transform, and iterate to address the consumer pain points that exist in the market today. This fundamentally changed Thorne from just another high-quality, vertically integrated supplement brand into a science-driven, vertically integrated wellness platform built to deliver best-in-class end-to-end nutritional solutions and health intelligence. This transformation continued in 2021 with Thorne acquiring Drawbridge Health, the company that reinvented the blood draw experience by offering a more comfortable and convenient blood testing solution through a one draw A1C test system. And while Thorne made a few other acquisitions over the last two years, I believe those were by far the most impactful. Today, Thorne processes hundreds of personalized tests, evaluations, and surveys per day that range from sleep, stress, weight management, gut health, and longevity. The data collected from consumers combined with a powerful AI engine enhances Thorne's ability to develop actionable insights from the data on its platform. Those personalized recommendations and education to consumers drive higher conversion and retention rates. The system also enables Thorne to create better products because it has access to multi-omics data sets. Finally, the availability of this data most definitely opens further revenue opportunities for Thorne in the future. But for right now, Thorne leverages that platform to enable customers to easily choose personalized plans through its subscription service. Thorne has approximately 309,000 active subscribers in the first half of 2023, which has driven the DTC website to be the dominant sales channel. To give that kind of huge accomplishment the weight it deserves, I need to provide historical context on Thorne's sales channel strategy. It was only seven years ago that Thorne transitioned away from exclusively a direct-to-practitioner supplement brand. Yes, Thorne still sells to over 47,000 health professionals across the world who recommend its products to their patients when appropriate, but DTC sales now account for 51.2% of the total 2023 first half revenue. Speaking of revenue overall, Thorne has grown about 50% over the last two-year period since it went public. Does that make it a high flyer like, say, hims and hers? No, but the company has also been able to keep gross margins essentially neutral during that period of growth, which is quite impressive considering it manufactures hundreds of total SKUs and it has been like less than an ideal operating environment within the supplement industry. But for this last part of the content, I want to talk about how the future of Thorne Health Tech could look with the help of L. Catterton. While Thorne did see those consumer healthcare and personalized prevention trends early, and is arguably building out a new category within the health and wellness market, they aren't without competitors that are attacking the problem from a slightly different angle. The before-mentioned hims and hers would be one of them that now has a run rate approaching $1 billion in revenue. Additionally, Nestle, the largest food and beverage CPG company in the world, has a comprehensive strategy that it's compiling through M&A activity within its Nestle Health Science division. And with L. Catterton, Thorne gets a private equity company that has an impressive track record with deep expertise in the intersections of health and wellness, health technology, and fitness technology has global reach and extensive operational capabilities. Some of the related L. Catterton investments would be Persona, which is a personalized nutrition company that exited to Nestle Health Science, Nutrafol that was sold to Unilever. And while this one isn't very impactful, a fun one for my sports nutrition industry followers, L. Catterton still owns IFA Store, which is Italy's leading DTC platform in the supplement category. On the past and present minority and growth investment side, 
El Catterton has tons of interesting synergies it could leverage with health and fitness technology companies. And last but certainly not least, El Catterton still owns Tally Health, which has kind of a similar business model to Thorne, but focused only on anti-aging and longevity. And as I mentioned earlier, Thorne does have its own longevity test and supplements, but this could be a combination play for El Catterton. But I shared all of those portfolio names because I think it shows that El Catterton is a great partner to fuel Thorne's long-term growth aspirations of being a major player within the next era of health. One that will certainly be data-driven, wellness-centric, with a guiding focus on preventative care that extends the health span of each individual. Wow, I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my new short-term goal of 3,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that basically 80% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.